Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to QDAVRA's weekly webinar. My name is Patrick Halstead, and I'm going to be presenting today. We have been talking about Forms Viewer uh, for quite a long time now, and today we're really going to talk about where we're at with Forms Viewer, and um, we've got customers now using it, and we wanted to share an update with you. Uh, it's version 1.1, and I wanted to quickly, um, before we get started, I want to do our quick poll for the day. It's a simple one, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of input from you here. Uh, really looking at um, those of you out there who've been watching us as we've progressed to build uh, this uh, InfoPath V2 technology, and um, it's a multiple answer question, so if the poll's too complex, you can just ignore it, but the idea was to uh, to check, basically check off the uh, answers that uh, um, you know, why are you here? Why are you here today? Are you here because you want to use Forms Viewer? And if you are, um, you just check off the uh, the answers. And I am broadcasting to you from Osaka, Japan today, so there might be a little bit of lag there. We'll give the poll a few more minutes. It looks like a few more seconds. It looks like we have 58% of you voted and 75%. That's great. So 67% of you um, have SharePoint 2013 or 365, actually 67%. And 89% of you uh, want to show your team the best alternative to InfoPath. Actually, it's 90% now. And 60% um, need anonymous submit. That's great to see. 20% uh, um, want to take advantage of uh, the free support plan. <laughs> and the, um, the rest, 9% uh, of you, um, uh, are, are cost conscious. Well, thank you very much for, for voting. You got 92% participation. That's great. Um, OK, so. Um, we are here to talk to you about um, potentially a fix for the cracks that we've started seeing uh, in, uh, in InfoPath. We've seen a bunch of minor cracks in the foundation of, uh, of Microsoft InfoPath that started in 2003. Um, they announced they were discontinuing it in January of 2014, um, and they were going to um, disclose a new technology, a new um, Offering in uh, summer of last year, about 18 months ago, and that didn't uh, that didn't reach fruition. Uh, so now Microsoft is actually going down a couple other paths, but but they haven't gotten anywhere yet in terms of migration. And so we've been um, worried that um, with the lack of uh, an aggressive migration path from Microsoft, we've been worried that there might be some support issues, and we've seen a couple. So over the summer, we saw one issue with the. Uh, with the designer where we have a, a dialogue that pops up and it gets clipped. Um, not a huge issue. You can look at event viewer. We've done webinars on all these issues. Um, and then a couple months ago, actually about, yeah, I guess it was about a month and a half ago, we saw an issue with the, the filler. An IE update caused the filler to start thrashing and um, there's a memory leak. Of course, the solution was to uninstall the update from IE, Internet Explorer. But, but still, we're concerned, and we're starting to see a little bit of the support cracks, and um, there aren't any good uh, alternatives. So first off, before we talk about this, I want you to imagine for a second that you're living in a future house. You've got a uh, modern design, solar panels, whatever, and I want you to think about which what, what your forms need in terms of the future, right? So you're going to build a house for your forms. Uh, what kind of a house, in terms of technology, would you want for those forms? So I've listed up eight features. I've been talking about this for a while now. Um, and I'm going to compare some of the technology offerings in the next slide. But first, let me tell you what these columns in the next slide mean. So we have a column for document-centric format. That's important for people today because you have to be able to audit your process, which means you have to have a copy of record and actually a saved document for a forms, you know, certain point in time, you want to make sure that you have the, the version history of that form. You also need to archive your forms, um, the data that's in them. You need to provide an approval workflow or some kind of a workflow to, to let the forms flow through a process, and that requires a document. So that first uh, criteria is really important today. Not all of the alternatives to InfoPath support document-centric formats. The second bullet this rich table support, basically what this means is the form has to look good on the web. It has to look good in SharePoint. It has to look good on your desktop. 
um, as well as the mobile browsers. Now, I've added another criteria here, rich app support for mobile, because more and more we're using our smartphones and tablets uh, to enter information. And really what this third bullet talks about here is the ability to integrate with those devices and get information from the camera, the GPS device, the signature, um, maybe you get like with the iPhone 6S now you've got the bio-authentication. Bio we need to be able to get that data from the phone and actually put in the form we want to. That would be a great feature for the future. Um, we, we also need that web data connectivity we, we've learned to love with InfoPath, the ability to query uh, data connections, REST data connections, SOAP data connections, JSON data connections, and submit to the web, submit to a database. That's really important. That's data. Um, the fifth criteria is rules. We need to be able to create forms without writing code that are rich, uh, that have validation, conditional, hide, show, you name it, right? Dynamic display. That's rules. And then the sixth criteria I'm saying is, is basically dependability. You want to rely on a technology or a company that's been around for a while. You don't want to basically just you know, if it's a company from from some strange location on our planet Earth that just came out of nowhere, um, you're probably not going to buy their technology because you don't know how long they're going to be around. Um, seventh criteria, you want low cost. Obviously, not all of you care about cost so much, only not only about 10%. But, uh, but we do want to make sure that we don't have to recreate your solutions from scratch because you spent quite a bit of time building those solutions and you need an alternative. And then finally, um, you want to have compatibility um, and that basically is, is going to return on your current investment. You don't want to lose what you've already done. So here's a quick matrix. I've chosen a few of the technologies, in, and including Power Apps, which was announced last week by Microsoft. Um, Power Apps um, on Channel 9, they've got a bunch of videos. Pretty exciting stuff, um, but it's not out yet. It's, uh, there's no costing information, um, and um, it does not document-centric. Um, and nor, nor does it have a, a huge support for rules. One thing that's interesting about this grid is that all of these technologies, with the exception of Power Apps, have rich support for rules. Uh, InfoPath, obviously, K2, Nintex, PDF Share Forms, Forms Viewer, which we're going to talk about today, Formotus, one of our partners, um, and, and Power Apps is quite, not quite there yet, on, according to the people who have been looking at it. This, of course, this big disclaimer here, this is my, just off the top of my head, analysis. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really just to give you kind of an idea of uh, these various different technologies and where they stand in terms of those eight criteria. Um, now, cost, what I've done with cost is I've, I've used a logarithmic scale. Well, not quite logarithmic, but it's, it's uh, you know, if it's less than 5K a year fixed, then it's $1 sign. Um, if it's uh, obviously InfoPath form services, there's an enterprise license for SharePoint that's required. So conceivably, if you were only buying SharePoint for InfoPath today, that would probably be $2 signs instead of one. Um, KG Smart Forms, they run somewhere between 30 and 50K, and then you gotta add on the solution cost on top of that, so they're for fairly expensive. Nintex, much less so, but still you're gonna spend you know five figures to get a Nintex solution in place and to build the forms behind it because you're gonna have to create those forms from scratch. Um, we're really excited about PDF share forms um, for Modus and, and our own technology, um, but neither PDF share forms nor form, actually, for Modus does provide a migration path. It's a little bit less than a full circle here because they have some compatibility issues, but for the most part, they do provide a conversion path. Um, they don't have a desktop viewer uh, or a browser viewer, but they do have a very, they're, only, they're one of the only ones with the exception of Power Apps that has a rich um, app interface. Okay, so that's my quick matrix. Today we're talking about Forms Viewer. Why, why Forms Viewer? Well, we want to give you an option to migrate your data um, that is minimal cost and very low cost to maintain. So not only is it easy to migrate your existing XSN as is, but you can also use it in the future without a huge amount of cost, right? We have a, we have a very, uh, we have a fixed support plan. We're not charging you for license fees. Um, and uh, for those of you who join us for the beta that we have out right now, um, we'll give you free support for two months. Um, and then finally, we want to make sure that it works ex uh, alongside of your existing uh, form. In other words, you want to be able to install it parallel with the current form library and be able to open both forms, InfoPath and Forms Viewer, uh, use, it, use Forms Viewer for, for the forms, but have a backup. 
um, and that gives that basically removes all the risk. Um, you can have links that open in either one. Um, you can continue using InfoPath as is. There's some benefits to using Forms here. I'll talk about those in a second. In fact, we'll talk about them right now. We've got some extra fruitful benefits for you. Um, one of those is the lower cost of licensing. Um, it lowers your SharePoint licensing costs. Like I said earlier, there's no licensing cost for, for Forms Viewer, um, but it does help you reduce the SharePoint dependency because SharePoint today requires a client access license for anybody submitting a form or for anybody using InfoPath Form Services. Well, we remove that need, and that means that you can remove your cost. A couple of our uh, major adoptees are, are using it just for this purpose, and, and according to your poll results, a lot of you are interested in the same uh, exact uh, benefit, um, and that's really exciting. Um, we've done a webinar on this. Um, I'm not gonna do a huge demo on that um, anonymous submit capability today, but go back to our webinar logs and you'll see a webinar from earlier this year that we did it on. Um, in addition, we've extended InfoPath. So for, for many, many years, we've been asking Microsoft to add more features to this form technology. Well, we, we ended up adding 150 features to InfoPath using QRules. We've taken the top 25 of those QRules commands and we've moved them over to, to work with Forms Viewer. And that means without the sandbox. So there's no code service. You don't have to worry about Microsoft deprecating the sandbox and removing functionality in 2016. They won't, but you don't have to worry about it in 20, 2020 or whenever it happens. Um, and I'll show you several of those commands today. Um, finally, it, it's easier to update. Now you can still go ahead and publish your forms like you are doing today. You will need a designer. I'll talk about the, the gaps in a second. But you can also just save the XSN up to SharePoint and use it as is. You don't need to publish. Um, now, if you're going to continue using the form library and you want to use them side by side, you will need to publish as well as save. Um, we've, we've sped up the form technology, so we're not doing postbacks. We do postbacks when we have to query a web service or a list, but we don't have to do logic postbacks. If you've got some complex logic in your form, we do that all client side in the browser. Um, and you'll see some performance advances today. We're going to talk, I'll show you a couple demos of, of how quick things happen. Finally, um, we stand behind the technology. We've been working on it for two years now. In fact, two years ago, uh, next week, we did our first um, prototype presentation on Forms here. And it was come a long way in two years, and we have a long way to, well, we don't have a long way to go. We have quite a few things we want to add to it. Um, and, uh, okay, so what are the gaps? So we have a few gaps. We're not supporting 2010 today. You still need to be able to design your forms using the InfoPath Designer, although we are working and thinking about potentially creating a designer in the near future. Um, there are a few controls that we do not support. It won't break your form, but rich text controls are not supported yet. Um, we're looking at that in Q1 of next year, people picker as well, um, and then multi-select dropdown, which is not really a best practice anyway, but we will be adding a rich text and people picker in the near future. Um, and so the first thing you want to do is install the scanner app. Now let me just show you what the scanner app is. So we're going to go into Demoville now. So on this site here, I'm just going to go to my other site here. I've got, um, I've got an HR site. And on my HR site, I've got some forms. So just pretend for a moment that this is your 2013 site and you've installed uh, the scanner app. Now to install these apps, what you want to do is you're going to get an app file from us as part of the webinar package today. You're going to go to your central admin and hopefully I'm not going too fast. Jimmy, let me know if, uh, if the screen is, uh, is not refreshing quickly enough. I want to be conscious of my across the Pacific bandwidth here. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to that admin site um, and you're going to click on SharePoint. And you're going to then click on Apps. catalog and here is where you're going to upload those app files um, that we um, is this correct apps for SharePoint one more click and then here is where you're going to upload those app files and what you do is you just basically click on new and you browse to the app file and you can see here that we've got two app files for you today we've got the forms your app 
and we've got the Site Scanner app, which I'm going to talk about first. So you just click on that. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it, but you just click on that and, uh, um, and add it. Okay, so once you've done that, what you're going to do is you're going to come back to your, your site. And I'm just going to go back to my HR site. And then you have to add the app to your individual sites. So once it's been added to all the site collections or to your, your uh, main, main site collection, you're going to go in here and you're going to go to Site Contents and you'll add the app um, here. And it'll be one of the apps that appears. And since I've already added it, it's not appearing here for me because I've already added it to my site. But you'll see the Cadabra Scanner app there. You'll add it. And then once it's added, you can click on the Cadaver Site Scanner. And the first, the reason why this is useful is it's going to allow you to quickly assess how many InfoPath forms you have on the site. So you can see here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven InfoPath forms. And it's going to allow you to select one of these InfoPath forms and scan it. Now, why would you want to scan it? Well, scanning it is going to give you some statistics about your form. So it gives you a nice report that you can print out for your team that analyzes your form. It talks about the number of schema elements, it goes into detail, um, cracks open the form template, gives you a, um, some metrics, the data connections, which are important if you're migrating it. Um, it talks about how many views the form has. If there's form code, it talks about that. It shows all the promoted properties. Um, it does a best practice evaluation. And you can see that this form that I, s I selected has a few issues that we need to fix. Um, and then finally, it does an analysis to see if the form is Forms Viewer migratable. And uh, you can see here that this one is. So that's how easy it is. Let me do one on another site here. I've got another one um, that shows up. Uh, let's see if we do Site Scanner here on our test site. Uh, it's going to show a different... Um, We'll pick uh, my, my Forms Viewer Test IPFS form, run the scanner app on that guy, different site, and it's going to give us the statistics of this form, which is different. It's got 48 elements instead of 42, different data connections, obviously. Uh, this form does have curals, as you can see here that um, um, it's listed that information. Um, and uh, at the very bottom, it says, hey, wait a minute, there's, an, there's a, a feature in this form that may not be supported in Forms Viewer. Um, so it's warning us. Um, so anyway, that's the first step you're going to do with Forms Viewer is you're going to install that scanner app, and you're going to run it. And um, then the next step is we're going to actually, um, so we've done the first three steps here, four steps. So the next step is we'll install the Forms Viewer app. So we do that exactly like we did with the scanner app. You take the app file, you upload it to Central Admin, you go into your site and you add the app. And then once you've added it to your site, uh, we can use it. So I'm going to go back to my um, back to my site. And I'm, I've got a form on here. I've got a, a sample form. Let me just show you the form in the designer first. So the form in the designer, um, that's the filler. And we were in the right place. Okay, so here's my designer. So this form here um, is a test form that we've used. It's got actually a bunch of interesting things in it. It's got a static image. It's got a hide show text. It's got curals built into it, so it's got some extra functionality. Um, it, you know, it's it's kind of a. Uh, I, I chose this form today because it has a bunch of interesting things in it, but it's not a typical form in the sense that it's not a production form or anything. But here it is in the designer. Um, so when we take this form, now to, to add the forms viewer to your, your library, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your library. And in this case, uh, the library is called Forms Viewer Test IPFS. Um, and then here what you're going to do is you're going to read our document on how to configure the library. Uh, so we have this short 15-step um, uh, document that tells you how to configure the links. Now, the links are important because you want to be able to open up the forms in Forms Viewer. And here you can see that I can create a new form using Forms Viewer. And uh, it is raining cats and dogs in Osaka right now. If you can hear the, uh, the sound in the background, it's uh, coming down real hard. Um, and here's the form in the designer, uh, I'm sorry, in the, in the browser running a new form. 
and you can see it automatically detects uh, my uh, my username and it uses it to create the form name. Um, it, it's got the support for default values, of course. Um, we have uh, some logic here that queries uh, a list to do a filtering, a filter lookup. Um, and uh, anyway, these are pulling from SharePoint lists, so we do have support for, for, for obviously, we've got support for pulling from data connections, otherwise it wouldn't be a valid version 1.1. We can calculate uh, difference between dates. Um, we have Q rules logic built into the form, so if I go down to my date here, you can see the date picker is a little different. For those of you who have seen forms here before, um, you know that uh, um, it's it's obviously there's a few improvements we've made to, to things like the date, the calendar picker. Uh, it's a nicer, beautiful calendar picker there. Um, and of course, this is our test form, so we've just added a whole bunch of things, um, calculations and things to to test it. Um, so, for example, for those of you who have buttons with dynamically generated labels, um, you know, that works just fine, as you would expect. We have Curl's commands for querying data connections and doing transformations. We've got picture buttons, of course, we've got everything. Um, the static images work just fine. Um, and you can see here we've got some debug section at the bottom showing all the Curl's functions that are, that are actually running in the background. Um, notice when I switch to view two here, I'm going to click on it right now. It is instantaneous, unlike the uh, browser support in platform services. Uh, the form, this form is a lot faster. It doesn't have those postbacks. We can submit the form. This form just happens to be submitting to a separate list. It's actually taking data out of the form and mapping it to a separate list, which is this list here. So if I go in here, you'll see that we just created a couple new items here a few moments ago, um, 826.45, that's the one right there. So it's actually mapping some of the data from the repeating structures in the, uh, the form to that list. Okay, so any, um, I, it looks like I have one person raising their hand. Um, if, uh, if you can't hear me, there's a, there should be a place to put a, a question in. Please let me know. Uh, Jimmy's on the call as well, so he's a, of course, making sure that my audio is coming through, but he's, of course, closer to me than he is to you. Um, so that's how you create, that's that's what Formsure looks like in the browser. Now, let's take a look at um, open open existing forms. So once you've submitted a form, as you can see here, I've just submitted that form using new, and I'm going to open the form again. Um, now, of course, you know, I could configure the library to... Uh, um, why is it asking me for that? Um, I could configure the, the uh, this is not what I want. So there's a caching issue. Any, any demo would be incomplete without a few gotchas. Um, so let me just try this one more time. We just saw this issue as part of the testing a while ago, and it's... Uh, Let's just see. Okay, there we go. So there's a caching issue with the links for those forms. Um, but you can see this is the form that I just created. So you can quickly open them up. Now, in order to open the existing forms in Forms Viewer, what you need to do is you need to configure those links. So let me just quickly show you how that's done. I'm not going to go through all the steps, but if you click on, I've got one question. I'm going to wait on your the question here until I finish the demo. Uh, we go to Edit Page. And uh, let's just make sure that I'm, okay, so we got the, that's a good question there. So hopefully you can still see my screen. Uh, we go to the edit page, and on here you can see that we're going to edit the web part where I've got all my forms, just edit web part. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add um, a file down here where it says miscellaneous um, to calculate those links. So you can see here the JS, JS link here at the bottom. That file is um, is what you're going to add. Now, in order to, to add that file, we actually give you a file that you can add here. And the file looks like this. It's basically some JavaScript. You just have to do it once. You're going to go in. You're going you're gonna to add a string. There's a document that describes how to do this. But you're going to add a string in here that points to your Form 0 installation. And then you add the name of the form. And then you upload this JavaScript file to a location on the site. 
and then you reference it here. So it's really just those two changes, and we give you the rest of it, and then that allows you to, to use Forms here to open up links in your existing Forms library. Now, of course, you could leave it as is and have both uh, links that open up um, the, uh, the form in InfoPath and in Forms viewers. You can have kind of a side-by-side -side comparison there. Um, I didn't set that up for this demo, but um, you get the idea. So it's not too hard. Once again, there is a document on that. Don't, don't fret it. Um, anyway, that's the quick demo. Um, what about cost? Well, the app is free. So the scanner app, the Forms Your apps are free. You can download them from formsquo.com today. We will be sending out a package to you if you answer the three questions in the survey. Um, the form services, which runs on the server, um, is free during the beta period. And we're never going to charge a license fee, but we will we may charge some time if you want to install the service on your Azure Windows instance. So, it, you know, maybe it takes a couple hours. We'll just charge you for our time to do that. And then you, you can just pay for your Azure license. Um, what is it, 100 bucks a month or something like that, 50 to 100 bucks a month, and you're, you're good to go. Never have to worry about any more, more fees, right? It's just the time it is to install it. Or you can use our public instance, and we charge a small monthly fee um, after the beta period is done. But it's, it's very inexpensive. Um, we're giving you free support for two months if you sign up for the beta. Um, and now I'm going to questions. Um, appreciate your time today. I think I must have answered one of the questions already. Uh, let's just see here. So one question from Mark. Will the scanner analyze a standalone form published to network share? Um, yes, we can actually, We can if, if we get enough requests, we can make a special instance of that scanner app that runs on your desktop. In fact, we're, we're actually thinking about doing that for another customer right now. So my guess is within the next two or three weeks, maybe a month, we should have a scanner app that runs um, standalone on a network share for you because we do have other customers that have the same exact need and they want to analyze all the XSNs, the InfoPath forms installed on a local machine. So we're probably going to do that and hopefully I answered your question. Um, it looks like you're the only one that had a question. Um, well, once again, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, this video, this webinar will be posted to YouTube later today. And uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you very much.